How to Develop Android Applications Part 2 Creating the Application In Part 1 we covered how to configure a virtual device emulator and how to configure your hardware device so you can debug and run applications that you create. If you haven't followed any of those steps and you don't have a virtual device made or what I just said doesn't make any sense, go watch the Part 1 that way you can um, follow all of those steps and everything that we're going to do in this tutorial will make sense. So go watch that, watch part one first and then come back here and then you can continue on with us. So right now, if you followed the first tutorial, you should already have a virtual device open. If you don't, just um, go to your SDK manager and start up a virtual device so you can follow along. And I normally like to start a virtual device before I start a project anyway because these take so long to start up. I just like to open up a virtual device and then I'll come and open up Eclipse and start up a project. So if you already have that started, just open up an Eclipse window. I already have my application started, already, so I just opened up the window. At this point, you'd open up yours. Um, if you installed the ADT plugin, the Android Developer Tools plugin, inside your toolbar, you should have the Android Development Tools um, options right here, which is the SDK manager button so you can start the SDK manager right from inside of Eclipse the and then you have your wizard option so you can start up a new project that's the wizard that's one wizard you have your open you have your open project wizard you have your um create test project wizard and you have your um create XML file wizard what we're going to do is we're going to click on the open new project wizard a new project wizard will pop up and what we need to do is get started by first choosing a name for your application I'm gonna just select mine to um migrate app that's the project name and the project name is going to be the folder that's going to hold all of your files in while you're developing your application next you come down to contents leave it set to um, create new project in workspace whatever workspace you chose at the beginning I mean when Eclipse was loading up it'll create your application inside of there next we come down to um, build target we're going to scroll down to Android 2.2 for the tutorial you can set it to whatever you want um, to develop your application for next we come down to properties and we're going to um, choose our application name. What's the name of your app? Mine, like I said, is going to be my great app. Okay, and next you come down to package name. This is your private namespace. You can set it to whatever you want. I've seen people start off with com. I've seen other tutorials they start off with org. Since these are tutorials that I'm doing, I just set it to demo. You could go online and search um, for other codes that you could put in there. But now you put in your um, name, um, whatever entity you go by. I'm going to just put set it to Android Pre-K. And then put another period. And then right here, you just put the name of your application. So Migrate App. And you put whatever name you chose right there. All right, now we come down to Create Activity this is optional but it's best practice that you have it set for right now just set it to the name of your application migrate app or whatever you chose and then right here the minimum SDK version that's basically telling um that's basically gonna set up inside of your um application what's the minimum SDK version that your app is compatible with so since we're developing for 2.2 and Android applications are backwards compatible, not forward compatible. We're going to set it to 8, meaning you need at least Android 2.2 API 8 to run this application. And inside the SDK version, you put the API level. The API level corresponds to the platform, which is also equal to the SDK version. So once you have that set, just come over here to click finish. And since you installed the Android Developer Tools, the ADT plugin, inside of Eclipse, when you start a new project, Eclipse 
creates the project folder and it generates all of the files and folders you need for your application. Give you a quick rundown. You have your Android Manifest XML. That's the main XML file for your application. That's what everything is based off of. You put your activities and intents. We'll go into that in another tutorial. Inside your resources folder, you have your drawable folders that have your icons. You set your images and stuff like that. In layouts, you have your XML files that are your layouts, which are your screens. You could think of it as your pages for like your website. These are your layouts, your screens for your application inside of values. Right now we have the um, strings XML, which hold the resources that define the values for um, different content and components and widgets inside your application and stuff like that. We'll get into that into a, in later on in the tutorial if we have enough time. What we're going to do is go all the way up to the top, go up to source, is your package and you have your Java file if you watch to if you follow any tutorials online and you see to um, inside the tutorial where it says you have to add your Java this is what you're talking about I mean you have to add this to your activities and stuff this is inside your um, sources folder inside the package this is where you'll add your activities just open it up so you can see this is the Java code right here and um, you want to add different functionality, you add your Java, your activities inside of here, into the Java file. Um, you can see you have your icon, the image. This is the icon that your application is going to use. That way when you install it and you see the icon, that's what it's going to say. You're going to see you have three different sizes for different resolutions. You have your main XML file, that's the layout and you have the um, resource values okay now that we're gonna go in and change some stuff later on but for right now I just wanted you to see what those files were now since we have the project created we're gonna set up a run and debug configuration that way we can tell the software when we wanna run an application what do we want it to do so first what we do is we come over to run it's the green play button and we click the down arrow once the, once this um drop down comes up just go to run configurations the run configuration windows will pop up now we can set our run configuration all right first what we have to do is we have to decide what type of run configuration you can see you have multiple options down here we want to run an android application so what i just did was i right click and went to new or you can come over here to new but i like to right click on it and now you can see it just started up a new configuration because what we wanted to do was make a new configuration so first thing you do is you come up in here and you choose the name and you can set it to whatever you want um, I'm gonna set this to virtual device because I'm gonna set up for first I'm gonna set up a run configuration for a virtual device alright inside it initializes in the Android tab we're gonna go down to project what you do is you click browse and the project selection window comes up and inside this window a list of all of your open projects will come up right here um, we only have one project right now but um, if you have multiple projects open over here in the package explorer on the left hand side that list will come up right here and you can choose which um, which project you want to um, select for this configuration so you could double click or just click, highlight it and click OK now the name of the application the project that we have open comes up inside of here you don't have to change anything else hit apply that way now it's set now we come over to the target tab and the target is gonna say okay now where we now where do we want to um, send the project to and inside it inside this window there's going to be all of your virtual devices that you created. If you don't have a virtual device in here right now, you need to watch the part one to figure out how to set up a virtual device. But you'll have um, your virtual devices right here and you'll select it. What it's basically saying is the target is going to automatically select this virtual device. So we come over here to press apply. Now, the virtual device that we have open 
that we had running the entire time. If you started it up right before you created the project, right now it should be already initialized and running in the background. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at it one more time. We have a configuration, the virtual device configuration is set to Android project named Migrate App that we just created. This is going to launch the default activity that we set inside of the Java when we created the project. It's going to target automatically this virtual device that we created that you have running right now. And you don't have to change anything else. Now when you press run, you can see inside the console is going to give you is going to show you a list of everything that's happening. Right now we can open our virtual device so you can see when it comes up, but it's basically telling you everything that's um happening. Like it's going to launch the Android ADB is running normally and it's giving you a um log, it's showing you a log of everything that's happening. You can see that it was installing the Migrate App APK and it was successful and it's starting the activity demo whatever you set your namespace to great app great act activity so you can see the run configuration that we set up for our application that we just created was just sent to our um virtual device you can see the text inside the title bar my great app and this is the basic fisher price my first application all it does is just display the text hello world my great app it's not the greatest application but it is the application that you just made. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to set up a, a configuration, a run configuration for your hardware device. What we're going to do is come down to run configurations. We're going to go back to Android application because we want to set up a run configuration for Android application. Right click, go to new, set the name. So hardware device, select the project, migrate app project, launch default activity, the target, and this time we're going to leave it set to manual. Once you click apply, it's already been set now. Now when you click run, you're going to get the Android device chooser that this window is going to pop up and inside here you can choose manually what device you want to send your um, application to when you run it so you can choose either your emulator or you can choose your hardware device you get your hardware device um, select to show up inside of there just by connecting your USB device if you have all of the settings set that we explained in the previous tutorial like you have the unknown sources box check and you have your um debugging inside the development menu check you should see your um serial number for your hardware device your phone or your tablet or whatever you're developing for show up right here you can select it and when you press ok you can see down here it's actually telling you everything is going to do as far as your device and you can see that it's uploading the migrate app onto device. This is going to be the serial number. I have an HTC, that's why it comes up HT0C. Serial number. It's installing the migrate app. Success. It's starting the activity. Activity manager starting the intent. It's basically saying that it's starting your application. And if you have everything connected on your phone, you should actually be looking at the application that just started up on your phone. And it's basically that simple. Um, in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to debug and we're going to change some of the settings inside the application do a little bit of customization and then um, I'm going to show you how to export your files from Eclipse I hope this helped if it did help you you learned something um, leave a comment subscribe to the channel and tell as many people as you can about it so everybody learns something